It's Friday, it y'all. <laughs> Friday is here. We're ready we to rock and roll. And you know how Fridays go? Fridays tend to be the day that our guests back out. It happens. Life happens. I get it. It's yeah. Friday. But we're going to get into it anyways. 10 tips for starting a business. Here we go. Shut, Shut up and sit down. down. Business the Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business on social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. <laughs> Boom. Let's it talk to some. Right, yeah, isn't it? Friday, 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 10 tips to starting a business for those real entrepreneurs out there, you know, the t ones who are grinding tips. it out. So here we go, 10 tips. Let's start off with tip number one, know yourself, your true motivational level, the amount of money you can risk and what you are willing to do to be successful. Know yourself. Damn, that's know a thyself. tough one. Know thyself. Let's let's face it, dude. Uh, to me, that's probably one of the biggest struggles that I've faced uh, in entrepreneurship because I have so many. Uh, well, well, first of all, a lot of different licenses, right? But uh, but secondly, like this whole financial space, there are so many different avenues in that that I can go into that it was kind of weird growing up. Oh, well, I can't say. Well, yeah, growing up, growing up as an entrepreneur, figuring out you know what it is I did. So people would ask me the question, "Hey, what do you do?" Oh yeah, dude, that this wasn't was a tongue twister. It wasn't that long ago either. It was no, it like. Was last year yeah. <laughs> like now, struggling with that what what do i do what, what do i, I do? Really do what do i do what do i do now now it's it's gotten a lot easier dude I, I host a podcast like it's super easy for me to go that route um and and what do i talk about like, i get to talk about all kinds of different cool topics and it really played into who i was right i was I, that's what i did i learned so many different things on so many different levels that when i finally built my business my business is built around my podcast so now it's like i could i can help you with your real estate needs i got either connect or I'm going to help you myself. I can help mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. with uh, accounting. I'm either going to do it myself. I'm going to refer you to somebody. I can help you with insurance. I'm either going to, you know, refer you to my, well, I'm definitely going to refer you to my own insurance agency, but it may be <laughs> my own insurance agency, right? Like all these different aspects that as I've been spending years uh, acquiring, um, whether it was certification, continuing education, trainings, whatever it is, now it all comes together. Now I get to talk to different people about what it is they do, help them uh, grow their businesses to generate wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow through podcasting. That is super cool. So I am a positive networker, but you got to know yourself. And here's something that I've learned recently for that know yourself thing that I've been saying a lot. You know, I was asking myself the question of, you know, who am I? Who am I? How do I define myself? Who am I? Am I a tax preparer? Am I a real estate agent? Am I an accountant? Am I a teacher? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And then I realized that the answer to the question was, was 24601, right? The answer to the question was more about who I wanted to become. And mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure, and you know, I have my affirmations that I write every morning because James made me get into the whole affirmation phase. So, you know, <laughs> you're welcome. Like, I'm a great leader. I'm a great father. I'm in great shape. I'm successful in business. I'm motivational. I'm an, in, I'm an inspiring teacher. I'm a powerful speaker and I'm a positive influence. Those are the things I write to myself nice. every single morning so I can point myself in that direction. Any decision I make, is it pushing me in the direction that I want to be in? Is it forcing me to go in the direction that I want to go in or is it taking me in an opposite direction? Know yourself. What are you good at? What is it that you're trying to achieve and who do you want to become? Boom. Fantastic. Tip number one. When do we get started with that, by the way? T -t Today, Junior. That's when we get going, right? That's when we got to get going on our on our show. That's how we got to get going on stuff. All right. Let's move on to tip number two. Hey, you got anything to say on tip number one, by the way, Ham? Know yourself? Know yourself. I, no, I was thinking of The Matrix, though. Uh, when, when Keanu Reeves, when Neo goes to meet the Oracle, she's like, know thyself. And you got that little plaque over the... <laughs> no. Oh, thyself. Mom says, "Don't forget a great son." Ma, that's by default. Aww. That that I, that just happened. To that. <laughs> you made me, mom. That's why you made me. So, looking forward to seeing you this weekend, mama. You know what? Um, I guess the only other thing to add on there um is 
if you're interested in developing the kind of habits that teaches you to know yourself, definitely look into Atomic Habits. Uh, you mentioned you're reading it for the second time or third time. Like third um, time yeah. Ollie has told us that that is his favorite book of all time. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty deep into it already. I've uh, been listening to it for the past couple of days on, on like 1.5 speed. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it ties your best habits into your identity so that instead of saying something along the lines of, no, I'm trying to quit smoking, you say, I'm not a smoker. And it just changes your mentality around, around your habits. So that has to do with like the, the uh, post that I actually put up today, believe in yourself. Cause if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Truth. Right. And that's, that's, uh, you know, that, that came to me while I was running and I'm listening to atomic habits and they're talking about, you know, figuring out who the identity is, knowing yourself. That's, that's vitally important, right? Mm -hmm. Once you understand who you want to become, and that's why the difference between who am I and who I want to be, because once you identify who you want to be, I am not a smoker. I am in great physical shape. I am an inspirational teacher. Like all these things that you want to be, you will start making those habits uh, a reality. You start making mm -hmm. the choices and the decisions to become that person, to know yourself, number one. All right. Number two, be sure there really is a market for what you want to sell, right? Tip number two for starting a business. Now, this is something that I talk to a lot of different entrepreneurs. Actually, I wouldn't even call them entrepreneurs. These are people who have ideas, right? And if you <laughs> I want a podcast that I recommend, it is uh, explicit. So don't go listening to it thinking it's going to be, you know, hunky dory. Great. Not safe uh, for kids. Not safe for kids, but great for entrepreneurs. Go listen to Billy Jean's podcast. Billy Jean is marketing. Mm. He's here in San Diego. He's a great marketing firm. He has a podcast. His shows are like five to 10 minutes long. Every episode, he does one every single day. And he'll tell you to you straight. He's like, you know, if you don't have, a, if you have a business idea, it's not worth a thing. Your ideas mean nothing. They are zero value, nothing. Now you can have a million dollar idea and it's not a million dollar idea. It's not worth a single thing, but you can have million dollar execution. And that's mm -hmm. a different story. When we're talking about point number two here is be sure that there really is a market uh, uh, for what you want to sell. You can spend a lot of time coming up with a product, coming up with a process, coming up with SOPs. You can come up with all kinds of cool stuff and you might have an amazing thing, but you're the only one who thinks it's amazing. And when you go to take it to market, nobody wants to buy it. And that is a huge problem. You've wasted a lot yep. of time. You've wasted a lot of money. You've wasted a lot of effort in put, putting it into something that no one wants to buy. So make sure that when you get started, focus on the, the little things, right? Let's get out there. Let's ask people, ask your, you know, figure out who your, your audience is going to be. Who's your target market? Who's your avatar? Go after them and ask them, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? And don't get offended by the feedback, right? You're mm -hmm. going to get feedback. Don't get offended when they say, I don't like don't this. Don't defend. No. Don't defend. Listen right? Listen to the feedback they're telling you because they're literally telling you a shopping list. Think of it like a grocery list. They're dictating to you what you need to do for your product. Now, I'm not saying talk to one person and whatever that person says, that's where you got to go. You got to talk to a few people, get people's opinions, be okay with going out and saying, Hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. What do you think? And the person who you're asking that question to should be the ideal client that you're going after. Mm -hmm. Once they get to the point where you're asking them, Hey, I got this going on. What do you think? And they say something like, I'm ready to like, hey, dude, I want to get some of that. Where, where do I get that? Yeah. That's when you have a winner. That's when you start working on the actual product. Okay. So that was so, uh, the pumpkin plan, wasn't it? That was in the pumpkin plan, right? That's another yeah. great book. Another We're, great book. You know, write that down, Ham. That's going to be one of our one of our uh, shows, top books, uh, books that you should read for entrepreneurs. We'll do that. Show. We'll do that show here on the next uh, on the next opening day when a when a when a client can't or when a client when a guest can't make the show. So tip number two: be sure that there really is a market before you start creating all kinds of stuff. We can easily spend money on marketing. We can easily spend money on production. We can easily st spend money on prototypes and all kinds of stuff. But if no one's going to buy, you're wasting your time. Figure out what the market wants. Figure out if there's a market for your product or service and then dive into it. What about you? You got anything on that one, Ham? Nope. That was good. You got it. You hit it on the head already. All right. So number three, research the competition. Look, I get it. You're an entrepreneur. You want, you think that the idea that you have is the number one idea. Nobody's doing it. And you want like, for example, podcasting, I talk to entrepreneurs all the time and I'm like, what are you doing to promote yourself? Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing maybe Facebook ads. Uh, how much do you post on, on social media? I don't really post on social media, bro. Research your competition. <laughs> like, first of all, 
You need to make sure that you get out there. Yes, podcasting, there are a lot of podcasts out there, right? And, you know, before before COVID, there were like a million. I don't know how many there are now, but I'm sure there are a lot more because people got more comfortable being behind the microphone or being behind a Zoom yep. call, right? Yep. So more people are doing it. Just because there's a lot of people doing it doesn't mean that you can't be effective. As a matter of fact, what it means is there's a market. People are actually listening to podcasts. People want to have content that they can consume on a regular basis. Now you know that your competitors are doing it too. So go listen to other people's podcasts that you are that you're thinking about getting into that niche. See what kind of structure they have. Look mm -hmm. at what kind of equipment they're using. Look at what kind of platform they have. How are they posting on their social media? And then take all that information, right? And make yours better or make yours more efficient or make mm -hmm, yours mm -hmm. less expensive, whatever it's going to be. But you need to study your competition. If you find yourself coming up with some product or some niche and nobody's doing it, that's either one of two things. Either one. Refer to step two. Yeah. Refer to step two. Either one. It is the greatest idea of all time and nobody's thought about it, which is very unlikely. Or two. Nobody cares right? The market does not exist for your product. So you're going to have a hard time, A, bringing your product or service to market and B, getting anybody to buy it because, yep. there, because there is no competition because there is no market, right? So that's usually the case. Every once in a while, I'll give you an example, Amazon, right? Uber, for example, Uber didn't invent picking people up and dropping people off. They didn't invent it at all. They were called taxis or buses or trolleys. Mm -hmm. The transportation system was already there. They improved upon a market that already existed. They're not the first to come to market. So look at your competition. What are they doing? Analyze it. How can you do it better? And that is how you want to make sure that you take on whatever it is that you're working on and make it so, so that the market really looks for it. That's tip number three. What do you think? Ken? I do. I got two things to add to that. Uh, <clears throat> number one is absolutely research your competitors and don't try to reinvent the wheel. Your competitors, especially the ones that have done it well, have done it well for a reason. Figure out what they've done that works. Losers always whine about their best. Sorry, that was exactly. premature, but yes, that's what I was going to go Don't with. just try your best. Figure out what they're doing and replicate as much of the foundational pieces of it as you can the second part of it and we don't have this quote ready to go but it's from one of my favorite marvel characters rocket raccoon ain't nothing in the galaxy like me except me <laughs> no, i love that one <laughs> ain't nothing in the galaxy like me except me so even though you're taking the foundational pieces of your competitors and not recreating the wheel Ain't nobody in the galaxy like you except you. You are the one that's going to bring your unique taste, touch, your unique creativity to the table and make whatever it is that you're working on better. You're the only one that can do it your way. So even though there's all that competition, even though the market, you might feel like it's saturated, ain't nobody in the galaxy like you except you. That's right. That's right. Let's move into point number Four. Quattro. Plan to succeed, aka focus on profit. Look, it's super easy to focus on, and I'll give you, I'll tell you, we've done it in our own processes. What? It's super, it's super uh, easy to no. focus on 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 the minutia of your business, the SOPs and the developing of the logo and creating the website and you know, creating the flyers and all that little stuff. But what you need to focus on is the profit in your business. Remember, your job is to be of service to others, but your business's business. pur purpose is to make a profit. That's what your That's business right. is there for. So your business should be profit-driven. Exactly. Uh, profits aren't everything. They're the only thing is another book that you guys should check out, right? That's how a business survives. I uh, I was listening. I forgot what I was listening to today because uh, I'm listening to another book called The One Page Marketing Plan. But uh, anyways, I'm, so I'm listening <laughs> to the book and they're, they're talking about- All these books. I love it. Right? All these books. Always educate yourself. By the way, that's another one of our points here. Anyways, um, nice. so so they were talking about how uh, how- Money, cash flow is the lifeblood of a business. It's like the oxygen to your business. If you don't mm -hmm. have oxygen, you die. Plain and simple, right? If you stop breathing, that is the end of you. And we don't want you can the survive, end of you. You can survive for like 30 plus days without food, 
seven to ten days without water and like seven minutes without oxygen so done you know. done so you want to make sure that you have enough oxygen just like your business your business must maintain cash flow That's right so you need to understand Huge. and focus on making a plan to succeed focus on working uh, in your business on the five dollar productive activities right either lead generate lead uh, follow up uh to go uh, sorry present negotiate and close those are the Boom. five things that you should be doing in your business every single day if you are not doing those things in your business if you're doing anything other than those things especially when you're first getting started you will not succeed plain and simple you might have something really cool might develop a great website you might have a really cool logo you might have a great process but it will die because you're suffocating it you are not focusing your your uh your uh, attention on the profit of your business you need revenue can you work on that website absolutely generate the revenue and then allocate some money and put that aside for that you can do anything you want if you have enough revenue coming in it's completely up to you manage that cash flow Focus your attention on profit. I know in almost any industry, you talk to realtors all the time, they're going to tell you how many houses they sold, how much total uh, you know, volume they sold in houses. Cool. What was your net profit? You talk to anybody in a business, they're going to tell you our, our company, like, you know, if somebody asked me, yeah, the $6 million revenue, a year in sales. Yeah. We made $6 million a year in revenue. Cool. How much of that did you keep? Hey, well, the price is wrong, bitch. Exactly. Focus on the bottom line your net is you know your net worth <laughs> your network well your net and your profit and loss statement that's the important part everybody take pays attention to the to the in between part right they look at the net they focus everything in the middle they cut expenses cut expenses cut expenses there's also the top part of the PL that's called the revenue you can always increase that lead generate lead follow-up present negotiate close Done. Boom. Those are the dollar productive activities. Plan to succeed. In other words, focus on profit. Anything to say on that Boom. one, Ham, before we move I on? I got to nothing five? on that one. You you said it all, man. All right. Number five, start on a small scale before going all out. Now, you've heard it a number of different ways before. People, you know, like in, in, we were literally doing the uh, podcast, uh, the carry experience right before this. And, you know, I, I wrote on there, the riches are in the niches. And I think I heard Ollie say that before, too, by the way. Uh, yeah. The riches are in the niches. You need to start small before you go all out. Focus. You need to become an expert in one thing. If you try to cater to everybody, you will not succeed because you will not be Huge. an expert in any one thing. I am speaking from experience here. I'm telling you from experience. I've yep. done this before. You want to ask me about taxes? I can answer your question. You want to ask me about real estate? I can answer your question. You want to ask me about accounting? I can answer your question. You want to ask me about math? I can answer your question. Those are a lot of different things. But when I had <laughs> to define podcasting, I can answer your question. Like if you had to define what you were going to do, I, I did not become an expert in any of those one things right away. And as such, the market didn't know what I was doing. They knew I knew stuff, but mm -hmm. that was about it. What did you want to focus on? I don't know. Start small, become an expert in that industry, become the person people come to, to get the answer for something very specific. Mm -hmm. And then once you've generated and built a business, a good business around that, now you can branch out. Right. Think of a. Uh, I'll use Amazon for example. Amazon was really, really, really good at getting you the book you wanted. Yep. That's what they got really good at. They gathered information about you in that specific space, and then they added a little bit, and then they added a little bit. Now, for Amazon, you can get a product. I can. I watch shows on Amazon TV, mm -hmm. movies. They have their own type of shows that are produced by them. I mean, there's all kinds of cool stuff that Amazon is doing because they spread out. Same thing with uh, Elon Musk, for example. He got down and dirty and created this company that very few people even remember that he did, but it's called PayPal, right? It's a pretty big company. <laughs> made a lot of money. It's a little teeny then, tiny company. It's a little teeny tiny company, right? Made a lot of money and started all kinds of other programs. Now he has the resources to expand into other areas. That's why he's got SpaceX. That's why there's Tesla. That's mm -hmm. why there's the Boring Company. Like all these different companies that he operates – well, they, but it all came from focusing his attention first and foremost on that very first thing that he was going to do, which is the PayPal company, right? You are the same way. You have many, many skills and you're probably good at a lot of different things. Niche down, focus on a small scale, become the expert and get really well known in that space. Collect emails, collect data, collect phone numbers, become a good expert, build that database. And then 
once you have succeeded at this one thing really, really well, start to expand from there, right? Start to grow from that point. Start small before going all out. Too many people make the mistake of going, well, I need to come with this market, with this with this little widget, and then I got to put this to, this thing out in the market, and then I also have this thing that's really cool. And I could do shirts and logos and all these things, and before you know it, you've never done one thing really well. You've done a bunch of things poorly. Speaking Jack from experience. Jack of all trades, master of none. Take my word for it. Been there, done that. Don't do that. 100%. This is why it's one of our tips. Start small and scale uh it starts small it starts on small scale before you go all out all yep. right <clears throat> i'm trying to yep. get a good pace you think i'm on a good pace i think i'm gonna hit all 10 i'm gonna try yeah, to you hit think all so 10. all right let's let's move on then i won't say nothing let's all move right, on number to step six. six number Tip six do not fixate on mistakes or get demoralized by them look dude here's oh. the here's the plain and simple thing you will make a mistake right you will lots have of them Okay, maybe that's extreme. The mistake is not going to kill you. I hope it doesn't kill you. Don't go that extreme, right? However, mistakes will happen. This is the learning process. I try to get this across to my students all the time. They're like, oh, I don't know how to do it. I get stuck right here. Good. That's exactly what I want you to do. Because you hit that wall, you are now learning. Your mind is literally learning how to overcome this obstacle. The problem is most of us quit when we come across this obstacle. Do not quit. Why do we fall, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. You need to uh, realize that a mistake happened. Yes, acknowledge it. But don't get demoralized and do not fixate on that mistake, right? That mistake does not define who you are. It defines what the action happened. You had a specific task. You tried it. It did not work. That's okay. Now you know what not to do. You probably learned a, a couple lessons from that. Adjust and then take a new approach and keep going. Do not fixate on it. I know all too often there are too many people who make a mistake and then that is their badge of honor. They always talk about that mistake. It's like gamblers, right? When you talk to poker players, they always tell you about <laughs> either that big pot that they won or that big pot that they lost, right? They never Usually get the past, one that they lost. Right? It's always the one that they lost. They fixate on it. That's it. That's the one that they that that's their iconic moment. You see people who peak in high school and they have the, you know, they they didn't get the girl or they, you know, I've been watching uh Cobra Kai ham and, and that's what the uh, that's yeah. where I thought of that. And Cobra Kai, he's like, you know, I didn't get the girl. I didn't beat Daniel LaRusso, you know, and that's it. I've peaked. Do not fixate. You will become what you think about. If you focus mm. your attention on those mistakes, you will only see the mistake in front of you. You will not see the opportunities that are presented. Because tomorrow the sun will rise. That's right. You took a wrong turn. That's okay. Now you know what's on this side of town. Right, And you never know what opportunity will present itself when you make a mistake. Sometimes mistakes, even though they're not the intended outcome that you wanted, can have a vastly different positive outlook. It just depends on how you look at it. So don't look at it as a mistake. Don't look at it as a flaw. Don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as a learning experience. What opportunity can you get out of it? Right? I know it's tough to do. I get that. It's not the easiest thing to do, but do not fixate on the mistakes. You become what you think about. Focus on what you want. All right, number seven here. Number seven, learn from others. Now, come on. I've, I've, I don't know how many times we've said it already. This is literally why we have the podcasts that we do. Right? Learn from others. You can either A, like hire an, a mentor, which I suggest you do if you can. Hire a mentor, mm -hmm. hire a coach, get the education that you need, get the coaching that you need for sure do that. But there are podcasts out there that you can listen to, and there are many in your own niche, in your own space that you want to be talking to or listening to. You don't even have to agree. You don't have to agree. It's kind of like we're literally in a political storm right now. We're about to hit the the, uh, the presidential election. People either love or hate Trump. They love or hate Biden, or they hate them both, or they love them both. Whatever your <laughs> opinion is, it doesn't really matter. Here's the advice I give my students. If your household... Every time you come home, they watch the news. They're watching Fox News. I suggest you turn on MSNBC and watch that one. Now, you don't have to agree with them. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to shift over. And if you're ready, become blue or whatever. That's not the point. 
But the point is, if you listen to both sides, you now can have an empathetic this uh, uh, point of view. You understand where the other side is coming from. Even mm -hmm. if you don't agree, you see where they're coming from, and that gives you perspective. And then you can make an informed decision on wherever you want to go. Same thing applies in your business. Learn from other people. There are other people who've already achieved the level of success that you want to achieve. There are also other people who have failed at avenues that you don't want to fail in, right? That you don't want to make the same mistakes. The more people you talk to, the more you learn from others, the fewer mistakes you're going to make. You know, you're, what is, what is the saying? Um, smart people learn from their mistakes. Uh, geniuses learn from the mistakes of others. Right? I've been saying it, Miguel. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. Right. So pick up a book. You don't want to read because you, you're, you know, you might get a paper cut. Cool. They're on audible. You can listen to them at all times. That's cool. <laughs> you can listen to a podcast. You can watch oh. YouTube videos. You can watch our podcast and listen to the YouTube video and watch the YouTube video all at the same time. Pro tip when it comes to uh, Amazon uh, or audible. Remember oh. what we learned the other day? Oh, so if you don't know, you have up to one year to exchange your audio book. So literally you can click on the book right? There's a, like the little three dots drop down. It says exchange book. They will give you your credit back and it gives you the opportunity to get a whole new book. That is yeah. worth every bit. Like if you don't get anything out of this podcast, other than that one thing, that's totally worth it. So dude, it blew my mind. Project. I got three credits. I got, you know, I, I don't, I get a book every month at least. Right. And, and sometimes they're good books. Sometimes they're not very good books and that's okay. Like I said, gain perspective, right? There's something to learn out of every book, but if I don't like it, cool. I'm going to return it. With one click of a button, and now I have a credit, I'm going to go get another book. And guess what? I'm going to fill my brain with some more stuff, some more and things to learn, right? From others. Exactly. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Only if you learn them, buddy. Only if you learn them. Right. All right, cool. Tip number eight. Uh, tip number eight is put yourself out there. Look, I get it. I don't like the way I look in front of a camera either. I don't like the way my voice sounds behind the mic either. But you get used to it. Here's the thing. The face Your you have had to. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. That, that one actually deserves a, a, it deserves one of these, right? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So put yourself out there. Look, social media is, is you're either going to do one of two things when you're on social media. You're either a consumer or you're a producer. Which one are you? If you're in business, you better be producing content. Look, I know when my first business came out, we were spending so much money to get in front of people. We were spending money oh, on yeah. radio commercials. We were spending mm -hmm. money on door hangers. We were spending money on penny saver ads. We were in the yellow pages. It was all kinds of money that we were paying just to get the distribution to be in front of people's faces as often as we possibly can. You know why those companies don't exist? You know why you've never seen a yellow page book if you were born after like the year 2000? Because the <laughs> internet came and it crushed it. There's no need for me to put my, my information in a yellow pages because I can put my information in front of you via Google, via Facebook, via MySpace, via you know Instagram, whatever it is. Get yourself out there. And yes, you can buy your way to get in front of more people, but you can also do it for free. There's already a circle of influence that is around you. There are your existing friends, your existing family that probably have zero clue as to what you actually do for a living. So make sure that you get yourself out there. Let them know what it is you do. Put out content, something useful, something helpful for them. And then you will benefit from that because you're literally doing what you're supposed to be doing in business, which is getting in front of more people and telling them what it is you do. All right. Number nine, understand the difference between working for yourself and building an ongoing business. Now, there are a lot of you out there who just got fed up at work. You're like, I am done, right? I am done working on uh, working for this guy. I'm tired of working for this particular person. I don't know what's up with my boss, but I can do it better. I am leaving. I'm going to go do this thing myself. Screw that guy right? A lot of us are, are into that. However, however, you need to be careful because if you take off from work and all you do is do what you were doing at work for yourself, you left one boss to have a lot of bosses. They're called your customers, <laughs> right? And right? you will be working in your business. Thanks, Adrian. Good tips. You will be working in your business for a long time, way worse because the customer's always right. And guess what? 
they're your boss at the time. You're never going to, it's going to be worse. You thought you were working hard from nine to five. When you become self-employed, you're working hard from, from five to nine. It's the other way around 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah, I got that right. It was nine to five or five to nine. You're going to choose which way to do it. So understand the difference between working for yourself and building a true business. A business is systems. It's processes. When somebody gets hired under your company, doesn't matter who they are, or what skill they have, they are they are operating a system or a process that you put in place. If they leave, you can easily train somebody to replace them and operate that system or process. Think of McDonald's. McDonald's is run by 16-year-old kids across the world, right? Why? Because they put a system together uh, uh, that anybody can operate, right? Even a caveman can do it, <laughs> right? But it's that simple, the process is what's important. And when you're working in your business, when you're building a business, you need to have systems and processes in place to not only simplify what you do, but to bring somebody in that can easily be trained to operate that system, right? So working for yourself is much different than building a true business. Once you have a, once you know what you're doing on a regular basis, now you start to break that up into simple things, SOPs as James called them, um, standard operating procedures so that you can follow and move in the positive direction. Teach right. others to do what you do. Teach others to do what you do, right? And what, what did agents say? McDonald's is a good example of a replicable, a replicable system. And that's exactly right. That's what it's all about. Yep. Thanks, Andrew. Right. What do you say? In between, uh, I'm in, I'm in between systems versus, versus per personal touch. Yeah. You know what though? There, here, here's the thing, right? If you love talking to clients, right? If, if you're good at that, by the way, Adrian is good at that. He doesn't say he is, but he's good at that, right? He helps uh, guide, uh, guide your creativity and make your creativity come out when you didn't even know you had it, but it's there. So uh, plus he's great behind the camera and editing. Just going to throw all that out there. <laughs> Check out Awesome Adrian. videographer. Video. Yep. Yeah. You like our intros. You like our videos. Adrian. Just throwing that right. out there. Just throwing it out there. That's right. Okay. So anyways, uh, if, if you really like talking to clients, right, that's your thing. Great. What about that? All that other stuff in your business that you don't want to do. You need to do it anyways. So while you're doing it, start writing the process down, start writing it, what you're doing, start like listing out the procedures. I literally have on my whiteboard over here, everything that I want a VA to do because that, and you know, it's listed. It's like nine things that I want them to do on a daily basis. It's List is the start. Then after that, it's break down each section, right? What is this process for each individual section? Before you know it, you got a little book or a little pamphlet of standard operating procedures. And now you bring somebody on board to operate that process. That's it. That's all it takes, right? But it takes a little bit of effort. You're doing the work already. Might as well write down the list of what those things are and then start to break that down. That is building. That is what, what we mean by building your business. All right. Last little step here, Ham. Tip number 10, never stop learning and trying new things. And that's just the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. I thought I'd throw that in there. That's the bottom line. All right. So, but that's the truth, right? You never stop learning. I mean, we, I am, I am a voracious reader of audiobooks. <laughs> I don't know if I can really yep. say that, right? But that's voracious what it is, listener. Right? Voracious listener of audiobooks. I never, uh, you know, I, I could be doing anything. I could be doing yard work outside. I could be running. I could be in the car. As long as my kids aren't in there, I'm listening to an audiobook because that's what I, that's, I enjoy learning. Learning is a fun thing. Adrian says, not only having systems, but being good at teaching and always improving them. That's where the never learn, never stop learning part comes in, right? Because you're going to put a system in place and, and it might seem perfect for you. Right. But as soon as you start operating and somebody makes a mistake, you know, ultimately the mistake lies on, on in your lap. Right. It's your yes. fault that the mistake. One hundred percent. It might have been any the anybody. I'm just going to throw this out there. Any CEO, any boss, any business owner, any leader of any uh, organization. If you can't admit that the reason why things didn't work out is because the people that work for you didn't do their job. And that's your responsibility. If you can't take responsibility for that, you have no business being in that position. Here's, here's actually, I'm going to go a step further. That is the way I live my life. That's why I live uh, for me personally. When people say, Oh, you always have a positive attitude. You always see the, the good things because I know everything's my fault. I don't spend mm -hmm. like literally I'll give you a story today. I went to Sam's club to go grocery shopping, right? And going to Sam's club and I, I, I bought my stuff and you get your receipt and it's kind of like Costco. You're walking out the store and you got to show your receipt, right? Well, there's two lines. And so I I'm going behind the long line. I realize there's two lines. So I move over and I go to the short line. 
Well, the, the lady that was right the, the right in front of me in the long line, she like ran in front of me and gave the lady the receipt. And I was like, whoa, that's okay. It's cool. Go for it. You know, there's two lines. No big deal. But she was upset, right? She was upset because I went to the other line and I was going to like, I guess, cut or whatever. And it was funny to see the, the Sam's Club employees look at each other like, what was her problem? I'm like, I don't know, man. It's okay. <laughs> like, it was going to be like one more second or something. Like I wasn't saving, you know, hours of time or anything. But the perspective, right? That's what I'm talking about here. I, in my perspective, it was like, yeah, sure. That's okay. Go for it. You know, the, there's two lines. You go ahead, go, you know, and, and it's over. She is probably upset that I cut her. She's probably upset at something that happened earlier in the day. She's going to leave the store. She's going to continue to be upset, maybe get in her car and be angry the whole time. And possibly, Can you, you know, get in that guy. He was just going to cut me in line. Right. And, and for me, the moment that ended, I was done. I never thought of her again. Right. Other than bringing up the story now, but you don't, you can't let other people drive how you feel. You can't let that happen. Right. And that comes from, from, well, I mean, this is not in rule number 10, but that comes from being able to see that other perspective. Never stop learning. Never stop trying new things. Never give up on yourself. Look, look right. Appreciate the mini, the mini what? What's shout the SO? Out. Oh, the mini shout out. Adrian, you got it, man. Anytime. All right. So, uh, never stop learning. Pick up books. Learn as much as you can. When you try something in the business and it doesn't work, try it again after you modify it a little bit. Give it a shot. Like uh, uh, another build little short system, story for trying build again. Build the system, wait for it to break, adjust, and we met you know, with uh, with, Shin, uh, with Shinjini Das yesterday from Das Media Group. Oh, yeah. Right. And she sat down with us and we're going over our, our LinkedIn uh, recruitment strategy. And one of them is our connection message. And so we sat down and we revamped our connection message and send it off again. So we learned from our previous mistake, right? Maybe our message was too long. We didn't have a call to action really, really written in there. We modified it thanks to uh, Shinjini asking us some deep questions. And then we're going to try it again, right? That's what it's all about. It's all about lear never stop learning and modify what you're doing. You hit a wall, adjust, go for it again. Hit a wall, adjust, go for it again. It's never ending, by the way, ladies. Just going to bring this up. Uh, Shinjini, um, do you do you remember her her um, Twitter? Uh, not off the top of my head. It's probably at Shinjini Das. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Das. So uh, just just for uh, numbers here, we were we had sent out eighty invitations and we had gotten two accepted. Now we've sent out eighty more and we have a total of thirteen. So. So that's a huge that's improvement. A huge improvement just from one little conversation. So it's worth it to, to uh, again, I know I don't know anything. Or I don't know everything. James knows he doesn't know everything. So we hire people to help come in and take a look at our problem from a different perspective. Right? That's what we used to tell you about Einstein at the beginning of our show every that's single right. day when we first right. started. Right, Problems cannot be solved by the same level of thinking that created them. Sometimes you need that outside opinion. All right, ladies and gents. 10 tips for starting your business. I hope it brought you some value today. Enjoy the rest of your uh, weekend and Friday afternoon. I think uh, you should also be upfront with your intentions and your clients for future or future business. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you know, and, and Adrian does that really well, just so you know, like we've sat down and we've talked about doing some things together and, and he's a hundred percent upfront. And even though you might think you're offending somebody when you're a hundred percent upfront, you're not. Everybody wants to know the truth, right? If I have something in my teeth and I'm sitting in a, <laughs> at, at the restaurant or I'm about to go somewhere, if the wife doesn't tell me, I would probably be more offended that she didn't tell me than she did, right? So just be upfront with your intentions. Let everybody know what the situation is, and then you won't ever have any issues. All right, ladies and gents, enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon. Have a good one. Peace. Bye-bye. And we're out. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the Business Bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the Insurance Bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network, www.businessbros.com.